So this entire story is insane. A convicted drug smuggler gets out of going to jail because the FBI messes up, ends up starting his own business, grows the crap out of it, then sells it to the Energizer Bunny. Still going. Long lasting Energizer batteries. Keep going and- Like what? Like that is so funny. Like how did this even happen? It's based off my last finance related video about Hoonigan. I decided to make another finance oriented video, but this one does also tie into the automotive world. It was actually at a job interview that I discovered this whole story that turns out to be super freaking juicy. And honestly, shit, there should be a movie made about it. It is so interesting. I was working for an investment bank in New York and I was looking to transition to private equity, meaning that I used to sell companies and I wanted to be on the buy side. And eventually I did make that transition and this story actually helped me get there in a way. So what ended up happening was I was interviewing for a private equity firm and I got to the case study portion of the interview. So what they did was they gave me a SIM on a company called California Sense, and I should probably explain what a SIM is. So a SIM stands for Confidential Information Memorandum. It's basically like a 50 to 100 page PowerPoint deck that highlights everything that you would need to know about a business in order to determine whether or not you wanted to buy it. So this gives you high level information about what a business does, who their customers are, who their suppliers are, who the management team is, and the most important part, the financials. So from here, there's another video that I can cover how an M&A process works, but effectively they give you a more than like Googleable understanding of a business. You would definitely not be making an exchange of money based on just this book alone. And one of the first things that I do when I evaluate an investment opportunity is I start Googling the company, I start Googling the management team. I'm just trying to find any sort of dirt that I can because it's fun. If you find something bad about somebody, that can save you a lot of time and a lot of work that you would not want to do otherwise because you can just point to, hey, I don't want to do this deal because I don't want to work with a convicted felon. Anyway, so as I was Googling, I noticed there was a disconnect between what I was reading in the book and what I was finding in Google. It's not what the book was saying, but what it was not saying. So the interesting piece was that when I Googled California Sense, every article talked about Linda and Gus Dopez in the book there was no mention of Gus Dopez. It was only Linda, except there was a picture of them both along with the rest of their management team in an airport hangar or something like that. The funny part is that was enough to trigger my spider senses and I just knew something was like definitely wrong here. So as I Googled Gus Dopez, I uncovered this crazy freaking story. So Gus Dopez was a narco and the first thing that you can find about him is in 1974, he was arrested on June 1st and convicted in the Bahamas for smuggling 1,604 pounds of marijuana in exchange for $10,000. He ended up receiving a one and a half year prison sentence and a $3,000 fine. He ended up serving 10 months of that and then someone else paid the $3,000 fine and he was released. Fast forward a couple of years later, in June 8, 1978, he was arrested again for smuggling drugs, this time another load of marijuana in excess of a thousand pounds. However, he was not convicted because of an agreement, I don't know how to pronounce this correctly, I think it's Noel Prase, where he basically forfeited his $70,000 aircraft to the police in exchange for not getting convicted of this crime. So it's kind of funny how the legality of marijuana has changed over the years and whatever, but one thing that has not changed has been cocaine. So fast forward to 1986. There is a huge operation in the FBI called Operation Airlift in which one of the FBI agents actually ended up turning into a smuggler himself and he got arrested. Guess who got caught up in that? Our boy Gus Dopez. Yeah, so he got indicted for smuggling cocaine. So in the 70s for him, it was marijuana. And then in the 80s, we're talking about Pablo Escobar and the Ochoa brothers and the Cali cartel and like all this stuff. Man, I love Narcos, great show. 
There was an incident where his plane almost went down in the Gulf of Mexico, and he had to dump hundreds of pounds of cocaine into the water. And guess what? The Colombian cartel was not happy about that. So what did they do? They kidnapped two of his pilots, and then apparently he went down there and risked his life to save their lives and was well respected by that FBI agent and the others that were caught up in this whole thing. Regardless, he ended up not getting convicted because the FBI's operation was such a mess, they basically had to let him go. And so there is a record of him getting released from federal custody in 1989. And then I think that's when he got out of the drug business for good, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But what was interesting was he ended up founding a auto freshener company called California Sense. I'm just speculating here, but there has to be something related between drug smuggling and concealing odors with scents. So California Sense was a global manufacturer and marketer of air freshening products in the household, automotive, and professional sectors. And they ended up selling to a TriVest Partners portfolio company called Handstands. Handstands owned a bunch of different brands, and then that ultimately got sold to Energizer Holdings. Yeah, that's right, the same Energizer that you know from the bunny that never stops beating for $340 million. So this entire story is insane. A convicted drug smuggler gets out of going to jail because the FBI messes up, ends up starting his own business, grows the crap out of it, then sells it to the Energizer Bunny? <laughs> like what? Like that is so funny. Like how did this even happen? I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I did. It was so much fun working on that interview. Even though I didn't get the job there, they were very impressed that I had uncovered this because nobody on their investment team did. And they ended up referring me to a firm that, I, that did end up hiring me. And that started my career in the private equity world. So who knows, if you just Google something, you may outsmart your competition and that may lead you to a really great job opportunity. So I can't wait to make more of these and I will see you next time.